So my name is Kevin from uh, Miami, Florida, and what I do is music, and the reason why I do it is because it's having such a significant impact in my life in a major way where it's just allowed me to really cope with the everyday hurdles of life that we tend to kind of have to go through, um, and it allowed me to kind of just push through it and, and be able to become the person who I am today, which is somebody who's consumed themselves now with music and wanting to, um, you know, be able to be a person to be on the forefront and, uh, you know, allow to share my music with the world as well. So tell us a little bit about, like, how you got started with music. So when, when did you start rapping? Uh, so, man, like, we were, I was just kind of speaking about it earlier, um, you know, um, early on in uh, elementary school and fifth grade, I really took a, a you know, a liking to just the hip hop um, culture um, and just the way it sounded and um, actually, you know, had a, a, a good friend of mine who's actually here today. Um, we actually started, you know, trying to rap ourselves. And uh, through that, what uh, we actually uh, ended up doing was just engulfing ourselves and understanding the craft, right? So going back and listening to the, you know, the greats like Tupac's and Biggs and DMX's and listening to their music and that really just became the reason why I um, kind of engulfed myself in the scheme of music. Yeah. Can you quickly tell us the story you were telling us off camera? Yeah. So a good friend of mine is by the name of O'Neal. Um, he goes by Trillion. Um, you know, we met really early on in fifth grade and just started listening to you know, hip hop records together. Um, and that led us to attempting to rap ourselves where we were actually in the classroom um, attempting to, you know, write rhymes and then we would assist each other in finishing our own like bars. So um, that actually led to us even, you know, meeting up later and going over his house and shooting music videos in his garage and like, you know, uh, like trying to mimic what we thought was um, that of hip hop, right? So, I mean, it was definitely uh, something that we look back on now, and we we just Tell feel. I had a girl you wanted to. Oh man, listen, man, you don't even feel it. Okay, so there was a chick. There was always a chick involved, right? But um, you in know, the fifth grade. Yeah, of course. What man? You, you just know when you. That's when you start like. You're like, oh man, you know, like that's when you start dabbling in that world of uh, just, you know. Awesome. So, what what would your what would be missing from your life if you didn't have hip hop? Sanity. Uh, sanity be meaning because, like I was telling you earlier, like music is such a, it allows you. Music is such a soul cleanser. Uh, I think it. Uh, uh, it really uh, gives people purpose. Um, we're searching for purpose. Everyone's trying to figure it out. And in that three minute interval, life feels pretty worth living for in that three minutes. So to answer your question, where would I be without music? Not here. And I think i found myself because of music. So. so if you think about your life as a book and there's lots of different chapters, Tell us about the chapter that you're coming out of, like what the title of that would be and what it's all about. <laughs> and then quickly tell us about the one you're in now. Man. Um, so the chapter that I'm coming out of, what I would say is the dark side of the room. Um, that's where my mind was. I was really in a dark place. Uh, a lot of doubt, a lot of uh, anxiety, a lot of uh, regret. Um, where I'm coming to realize in my 29 short, you know, years on this planet we call Earth, um, I truly started to understand that holding on to regret, doubt, and, and things of that nature do nothing but weigh you down. So I'd say the new chapter that I'm entering is uh, letting go. You know, letting go of all that dead, all that weight that's been not allowing me to elevate to the true potential that I. I know I possess. Awesome. What does success look like for you? Like in the next like five years, what do you what do you want your life to look like? The same way you're asking me a question right now, I want the question to be: Did you ever think it would go? It would like you know those quick interviews that like Lil Nas X for you know because he happens to be the recent you know big superstar breakout star. Um, the question where they ask him: Did you ever think after making this song that things would 
be, I want to be able to answer that same question and say, I have a feeling, you know, the, the same typical answer. That's where I want to be in terms of success. I want to be able to answer that question and, and know that my music touched the masses in such a way that it took me on a journey that I could never even fathom along with my brother right behind me. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's just um, something that I believe that success is something that's not measurable, you know, because success what is success? It, it, it's, it's, it's defined differently by yourself, by me, by everyone. Um, so you really need to fi find what, what success means to you. And for me, it means just fulfilling that, that hole that we all feel is there. And uh, really just finding that inner peace and that happiness that I can live comfortably in a manner that while the short time that I am here, I can be able to be a positive uh, light uh, for those and others. So you talked a lot about the different people that you look up to and mm. the hip hop anthem that mm. you have. Yeah. Starting with some of your role models, and maybe let's just start with one. Like who, who's someone that really inspires you? Who's someone you want to model yourself after? That's a tough one. Goodness gracious. Um, who is someone I want to model myself after? And maybe to make it easier, we stick in the world of music. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, Who's took it there? I mean, let's, let's, if we want it, because if you're not doing this to be great, what are you doing it for, right? Um, so I would say the likes of, uh, you know, Sean Carter, you know, Jay-Z. Um, he's definitely, I mean, he's just recently became the first billionaire amongst his kind. And I think that's the type of, those are the type of heights I'm trying to reach. Um, what does Jay-Z stand for to you, besides greatness? An example, a blueprint. You know, it's possible to take it from nothing to something and truly be able to, you know, like take it there. Cause that there's not many that I feel have done it to his his level. Do you think there's a lot of examples or blueprints out there for people like yourself? <sighs> yes, but the thing is it can, the answer can be staring us, staring at you right in the face, but we like to be oblivious to things and we get distracted very quickly that I don't, I think people tend to neglect what's, what, what's truly what they're trying to find within themselves. And when they're searching for, you know, whatever it is they're searching for, they can't find it. But I feel like if they dig within and then take the examples in front of them, then they can utilize that to create their own path. So what's your hip hop anthem right now? Oh man, see, y'all asked that same question to me in the journal and I was torn because there's so many to choose from. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, if I, if I stand corrected, I believe the anthem that I chose was Nas, The World Is Yours. Yeah. Is that one I chose? I did choose that. I would, I would hope that I would know that I chose that, right? <laughs> um, but no, The World Is Yours, right? I think I'm gonna stick to that one because I'm off of dead presidents to represent me, man, and that's the world we live in, right? Like, you need to truly learn how to operate in this playing field day to day to ensure that you survive. And if you don't learn how to compensate or be compensated for whatever it is that you're passionate about, because people tend to neglect what their passion is altogether, and they just get that dead end job, and then they're just unhappy with life. And it's like, no, I refuse to, I refuse to to live in that circumference. I'm going to be able to take the world in the palm of my hands and truly make make it what I want it to be. You mentioned stagnancy. Is, are there any, like, what are, like, your one or two, like, biggest barriers to success or, like, your biggest fears? I can, like, I would say just not getting the results you're looking for, right? Because we all have certain standards that we're trying to accomplish. So when you don't meet those standards, it's kind of a tough, it's a, it's a, it's a low blow. Um... And then just people not accepting, you know, like fear of people not understanding what's going on. And I think as I'm 
being more vulnerable in my music and, and allowing myself to kind of just forget about all that, I'm finding that there is so many people who truly feel and have the same thought process though. People watching who've never seen you or heard your work before, what are the three things that you want them to know about you? Ultimately, the final video of this will be like two minutes, so as short as possible. Oh, so I'm sorry, my, lo my long-winded answers, I apologize. No, no, they've been great, but <laughs> okay. for this purpose, because I want, I, I want to make Narrow sure we down. have some like Narrow poppy down. clips that will make sure you get you. into the video. What, what are like the three things you want people to know about you? Um, what are the three things I want people to know about me? Um, uh, what were the three things that I would want people to know? Cryptic but good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a scary thought. So you just took me there. We <laughs> had it, but it's inevitable, right? It's just, it's gonna happen. So if I had to choose three things that people didn't know about me. Um, I would say that I'm someone who, again, wants to be that, 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 if I were having to choose three things that people would need to know about me, what let's would get, let's do the three things first. Yeah, I think we, let's we talk about that. Yeah. What, <clears throat> what do you think the three elements that define who you are? I'm passionate. Passionate. Presidents to represent me. I'm out for dead fucking presidents to represent me. I don't, I don't ever want to, like, whenever, like, there's that moment you want to quit, like, I'm trying to find that word, like, I'm reluctant, um, determined, 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 so passionate, determined. Oh, Neil, that's your best friend, how you describe it? <laughs> <laughs> On the spot! I wish there was a camera here to cap to see you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, for those that don't know me, that I would have to choose three things for them to remember me for would be determined, hungry, and passionate. Those are the three things that I think truly embody what I stand for and why I wake up every, every day in the morning and what keeps me going. Awesome. Cool. Any questions before Summit stuff? So what is my ultimate goal in life? Yeah. yeah, and you can look at me now. Okay. What is my ultimate goal in life? I want to be able to. Sorry. Sorry. I always my, do the thing. All my right. ultimate goal in life. My is, ultimate. There you so go. my ultimate goal in life would be to be able to create a body of work that will stand the test of time. That will be able to feed my kids, 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 kids. So that would be my ultimate, like, like a time, creating a timeless piece of body of work, whatever it be, whether it be music, whether it be a movie, whether it be a painting, it could be one of many things that would just leave people, give people a moment to look, to look at that body of work and just it create a certain type of, like give them a sense of purpose or give them a sense of comfortability that, hey, you know what, in this crazy world that we live in, there is beauty within it as well. As as ugly the world is, this body of art allows me to see that there is beauty. Is your next one, what is your goal in the next, like the immediate future? Yeah, but I feel like you were really confident in that answer. So, is there anything specifically for 2019? Oh, 2019, okay. No, 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 that, my first question was exactly what yeah, you did yeah, answer, yeah, but now good. I'm curious more, if this year, was there anything you set out to do or anything you still want to do? I, well, well, we have, I have, like, I have, like, things, like, forecasted that I'm trying to accomplish here in 2019. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
right. Um, so 2019, um, I see my debut album, you know, um, being released in a in a manner that's well received by the the public. Um, followed by a collaboration project with uh, Trillion. And um, after that, just really seeing some traction and gaining a fan base and, uh, you know, traveling the world because of it. So to that, that's 2019's goals. And I don't, we don't need to be, you know, I, I want to take it to the lengths of the levels of Jay-Z, but in terms of right now, I just want to be able to live comfortably and make music. I want to turn the studio into my office. That's what I want for 2019. Awesome. Perfect. Um, and I'm sorry, my brain is delayed today. Um, sound bite the... I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm hearing you say, which I've heard some people say, and I love it, Please. the idea that you don't want to ever work for anyone else, like you want to be your own boss, right. like can you say something like that? Um, so for, in addition to accomplishing those goals for 2019, I want to be able to be financial freedom, financial freedom, like, and that comes from a standpoint of me not having to punch in into a clock, um, and dedicate my time in order, in exchange for, you know, for me to be paid and for me to live comfortably. I think that everyone possesses a talent or a skill that can be monetized in such a way that we are able to be our own bosses. And I think if more people, and, and even in the, the day and age we live in and the technology that's out there, I think it's, 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 it's something that's doable and possible, and I think more people should make efforts to do so. And I know that's something that I plan on ensuring that my kids, 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 kids don't have to report to someone else and have to go to those lengths in order to live comfortable. Finish the following sentence. The power of being your own boss is like... Limitless. With the full. <laughs> Limited? Oh, so, okay. Um, the power of being your own boss is... So it's not just one word, you want like a complete sentence. Or, or you can you can say it however you want to say it, but like just repeating what you Oh, oh, I'm with you! Yeah, 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 sorry. Excuse Everything you said kind of in like, like one sentence, like, well, why, why, do, why do you want to be your own boss? Like, why not work for someone else? The power of being your own boss is financial freedom and stability in a manner that doesn't require you to report to someone other than yourself. Sorry, I still lengthened out. Can you show me childhood photos and you guys are like, I'm like, this is the most precious thing. Yo, man, I was just looking at her face. You're like Mom Dukes over here. You're like, got the the photography. (laughs) Head wrapped on the porch, that's my baby. (laughs) Nah, but that's like, like, man, listen, and then if you hear the stuff that we're working on right now, me and, me and Trill put out a project out in 2018, like, like late 2018, and now we have like another compilation in the works, and I'm so excited with just the growth and the music and how it's evolving, and we're truly, and even like, man, the, 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 the men that we're becoming, you know, like we're truly walking into our own and becoming our, you know, the people that I know we always were meant to be. All right. So think, you think find that you have like a group of people around you that push you to do things that will further your career, your dreams. I think I'm identifying them now. Um, I know they're they're in place and that there's more to to kind of come. But um, is there? Repeat the question once more. Yeah, they're just people in your corner. Yeah, is there people in my corner? I think I'm finally understand that I need to be more embracing of them because I'm very secluded to myself. Um, that I, 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 I like again, I was just talking about nothing great happens by one person, and I need to break out of my shell and allow people to, you know, walk in into my life and be that support system that will allow me to catapult what I'm trying to accomplish. I actually uh, was an engineer. Um, prior, like a few, like about nine years ago, um, after graduating from music technology and sound engineering from that school I was telling you about, I actually interned um, for Cool and Dre. Um, they were, I was there for like four years and I rubbed shoulders with quite a lot of people while I was out there and, you know, big ups to them because they allowed me the opportunity to do that. But one person that I really had a genuine connection with was 
2 chains, and uh, it would be cool to just reconnect with him and just, you know, be able to exchange a few words and, you know, who knows, has a little effect. In terms of some of my previous work history after high school, I ended up um, going to a Grammy seminar. Um, which my sister actually uh, had me attend. Uh, that's when I bumped into Cool and Dre, and it was actually in a manner where we were walking to go grab some lunch, and she ends up telling me, she's like, because I was like, hey, that's cool from Cool and Dre. She's like, well, why don't you go talk to him? I was like, nah, he's too cool, for me, right? <laughs> so, but realistically, it, she that she was that person that pushed me, and I actually did end up speaking to him when I was about 18 years old, and then fast forward, getting an internship. Uh, working for them for about four years, um, getting credited as an audio engineer for Little Wayne's The Carter Four, uh, Rebirth, quite a couple of accolades there, Fat Joe's The Dark Side, um, worked alongside a plethora of names, and I don't want to name drop just because, you know, I know how people are, they think always a name, you know, but not who gives a fuck about those people, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, um, yeah, those were some of the experiences that I had where I was able to act as a fly on the wall and really see how music is created from people who were doing it at a very um, successful level. That's awesome. Also, shout out to the sisters. Like, so many people have said that their sisters, like, what? made it possible Listen. for them. One person's sister bought her ticket to come. Like, everyone. My mother and my sister. My mother and my sister. Because without them, I wouldn't be the man that you see in front of you today. Um, and uh, I mean that. I mean every word of that. Um, because unfortunately, you know, you know the, how the how men are. You know what I'm saying? Like fathers. Um, shout out to him though, even though we don't really interact like that. But my mother and my sister were definitely my backbone and really helped me become, uh, you know, this hum humble individual you see here today. Shout out to them. Big ups. <laughs> um, okay, so can we see the braids? Yes. Give us a little peek. Yeah, so shout, shout out to, um, actually I actually have two people that happen to braid my hair, but Natalie Styles, uh, and um, this is actually recently from Strawberry Styles. They actually both have Styles as their name, which is pretty cool. You keep your braids nice, because that's all I Thank you. Really <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, the, the um, Natalie Styles is actually, I'm not sure if you, you guys are um, basketball fans, Dwayne Wade. You know how his last season he had his braids? Mm -hmm. So the woman that did his, but she did mine before he did hit her, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's like technically used the record show. Let the record show. Let Let the record record show. show. Um, all right, so we've been having people. <laughs> we people get a crack out of that whenever I tell them that shit. They're like, yo, man, listen. <laughs> I mean, you you know how to spot talent early. <laughs> good? Good, 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 good. Okay, now that we're not on camera, I have to tell you, you look so much like my uncle that it's really freaking me out. Yeah, because then I would be like, yeah, it would be like weird. It's a you have an uncle Clive and you really? look so much like him. So Are you we're, Jamaican? I'm not, but okay. I do spend a lot of time in Jamaica. He's, he's Jamaican. So <laughs> okay. But I do spend a lot of time in Jamaica for work. So that's the other thing that I didn't kind of build on. That if you, I'll give you a brief real quickly. Yeah. So I know you guys, uh, AT&T and The Revolt, I actually work in the um, call center industry. So I started entry level position um, about four years ago, mm -hmm. um, and right place, right time. Um, we actually ended up. Uh, we were at, they had a partnership with AT&T, mm -hmm. and then we actually then ended up having a um, building relationship with uh, Sprint. So it was all in the wireless space, um, and I was actually one of the um, agents who you know was on the phone selling the product, learn, knowing the product, knowing the knowledge, and that kind of catapulted. It was an it was an industry choice that I never, or career choice that I never in my wildest dream could found would, would have saw myself in. But I tend to find that call centers is a place that where like call centers is like a place where either your dreams literally just went to, to you know to the gutter and you're trying to figure it out or you're just tr make it's a means to an end and you find a lot of people in that kind of capacity where you're really able to kind of find yourself because you have to sit there and communicate with people and if you don't communicate with them in a manner that's going to allow you to make the sale mm. guess what you're not 
you're not making much money while you're sitting in that in that facility. So long story short, I happened to be in the right place, right time. We had developed the relationship with Sprint, where then they kind of saw that I was, you know, doing well as a sales performer, and they tapped me on the shoulder. I'm um, actually a good, um, like another mentor of mine, uh, Alex Martin. Shout out to him. Uh, he uh, was actually Plaza's manager for the first three albums, and he was in the call center space. So that's kind of like giving you context to like people who happen to be in like that much you know like though you have that you have success with music and then end up in the call center world so uh, he ended up tapping on the shoulder because he knew that i was a like engineer background um and he was like hey uh, i want you a part of this sprint program that we're about to start um from get, being a part of the program he then said hey i want you to start being the person who teaches the, the people who are coming in to sell the product so that led to me becoming on the job coordinator and I was able to build a team of about 100 people in Florida where they saw that they were doing well and they said, hey, uh, we're actually going to send this overseas to South Africa and we're going to go ahead and send you to South Africa. Do you have a passport? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so that being in right place, right time took me across the world, which I would never even expect it to happen. Yeah. Um, and led me to experience cultures because that's when you when you go when you go overseas or when you travel period it really gives you a different perspective and it, and it, and it humbles you in a major way so long story short at t revolt summit now i'm actually um facilitating an operations that sells at t wireless and the residential products in uh, jamaica uh, uh in kingston and montego bay so i go there frequently and I have to, I'm pretty much the one who manages the performance indicators for the Kingston side. Gotcha. So that's what I kind of do that I will be transitioning to not doing here yeah. in the near future. <laughs> Amazing. I'm transitioning to doing the DC. We can't be friends unless I think you solid Making six figures but I never went to college Okay, fuck these haters, they comments I don't acknowledge I'm a diamond in the rough, all I'm missing is some polish, yeah You see me elevating, you should be tired of hating I get up and